Hey everyone, this is Ross, and in today's video, we're going to be talking about my fix, uh, 2000, 2018 year in review. Uh, we're basically now at the end of the season. There's very few figs now that I'm getting. Um, you know, very few are going to be life changing, but then again, I've been proven pretty wrong so far in the last couple of days here of November. Somehow we're still getting really tasty figs. Um, but I want to go over my list here and show you guys this photo album. I put together an album of all the figs that I took photos of in 2018, put it together into this. There's, I don't know how many there is in here, um, quite a bit. So you guys can go in here and anytime you want, check out these photos um, in addition to this video. So I'm going to put a link to this album in the description of the video. Also, already in the description of this video is my spreadsheet that I keep track. This is what I use to keep track of everything I'm doing, um, keep track of varieties, keep track of sources. A lot of them that I've eaten have a rating. So if they have a rating, that way you can figure out, well, what are the tastiest fix, right? Because I have a rating here. So all of you guys love to ask me that, and I can't really answer that um, all the time, but hopefully you can use this resource to check this anytime you want. So let's get into it. This is the beginning of my season here that we're looking at. And this is the first fig of the year that I, I got, which was Azores Dark. Um, it ripened, uh, the very first one ripened July 1st for the second year in a row. That's why I really love this variety. It sets very well in the greenhouse, puts out a ton of fruit. Uh, this year, it actually had a third main crop. It doesn't produce a Breba, but it would have produced a third main crop if I had a little bit longer of a season. Um, so I imagine in some places like, you know, um, California, if you live in a really warm area, you may actually be able to get three crops of figs off of this tree in one year. That's insane. Um, this here was Suwati, and this was the second variety I ripened. Also, with the help of the greenhouse, amazing. I couldn't believe how good this was. I have loved it last year. I loved it this year. Uh, the thing ripened its full crop probably before mid-August. I mean, the thing was done like that. Um, it's a very, it's a pretty early variety. I would say it's super early, but it's quite early. Here's LSU Champagne. LSU Champagne is one of my favorite honey figs. It's probably the standard that I use to judge all of my honey figs. Here's a dried Suwati, and actually what you can do, guys, is hit this info button. It will bring up the date in which they were ripened. Um, the dates are somewhat accurate. Uh, for most of them, they're accurate, because this is when I took the photo with my phone. Um, and it also has the variety name here. So if you're not sure what the variety is, hit the info button, and you can see what the variety is. So this is a Suwati that was able to dry on the tree pretty well. I've had quite a few figs this year that were able to shrivel up on the tree. This is the inside of that. I got to eat that with my brother. We did a video on that one. Here's more LSU Champagne. Here's Brandon Street Unknown. Um, one of my favorite figs of this year. Also got to eat this very early. It's definitely an early fig and it definitely uh, impressed me this year. Here's Love. Fico Love that's Paolo Bologna's one of his favorites in Italy, and um, I did get to eat it, but it was quite underripe. And this is a variety that for sure needs to somewhat dry on the tree to be quite good. Here's a Detrace Displace that was drying on the tree, and this is so early in the season. We had, you know, August 10th. At this point in time, for portions of, of July and portions of August, I think around now in August. Also in like September 1st, like August 10th, and sometime in July, we had like three mini heat waves that came in and really gave us a lot of heat. And the figs at that time were just unbelievable. I couldn't believe it. Here's another Detrace Displace, but this one is nowhere near as ripe. And I've realized I actually like them less ripe. Um, here's some that are quite ripe. Very, very good. We did a video on this, on this variety with those two figs. Here's two we did a video on as well. This is um, Brassy's Persian Unknown. You can see that there, as well as Little Ruby. Little Ruby is the littlest fig I have. 
but it's actually quite flavorful. Um, here's Taramo Unknown, very similar to Brandon Street Unknown. I'm definitely in love with this fig. Um, here is Fico Nita, and uh, this is from Sardinia. Was not that impressed with it, but it's a beautiful fig. I think I'm going to give it one more year to, to prove itself. Look at that, beautiful. Ron de Bordeaux, another great early season choice. This is GM175, and that says exclamation point. It should say 175. Tastes a lot like Sultane. I was reminded very much so of Sultane, a favorite fig of mine. It's got a fruity berry flavor with some honey. Here is Petit Albique, guys. We did a video on this one. This is a Violette de Bordeaux type. And oh my goodness, is the Violette de Bordeaux types very good. I was extremely impressed by this. They don't act, actually have to ripen that long for them to taste good. And I got to eat one uh, at my buddy Mario's place in Connecticut. He has one there by a different name that I pretty confident is a Violet de Bordeaux type that he got to pretty much shrivel up on the tree and it tasted like cherries. It was insanely good. Um, kind of like the Nero 600 M's that I got from Doug that he brought over from California. It was that good. So very awesome. Here's the first real plate of figs I got of many different varieties. It took us really until August 24th to get this quantity. Um, this is what? This is six different varieties in the same plate. You have Calderwood Unknown, which is the same thing as LSU Tiger. Um, there's some other ones in here. But, you know, the quality of, on this plate wasn't the, the greatest. It was mainly to do a video for you guys get them all on the same plate and kind of enjoy some figs all at once. Here's Yellow Nietzsche's. Interesting fig, man. It's very furry. You can see the, the uh, skin there. It's got these little hairs on the outside. It's pretty furry. It's weird. Um, what is this fig and why is it here? <laughs> okay, this is LSU Tiger. <laughs> I think the photo's sideways. I should turn the photo. But, uh, yeah, that's LSU Tiger. Same thing as Calderwood Unknown. I was not impressed too much by LSU Tiger this year. Um, I have a tree that's huge. I have a tree that's old. It didn't seem to matter. It was not that impressive. So, I don't know. We'll see. I think I'm, I, I got rid of one. Um, I killed one by accident by digging it up. And uh, you never know. I may, get, I may get rid of another and just keep one. Because I had at one time four of them. This here is, um, again, Yellow Nietzsche's, LSU Champagne. This is Italian 258, such a beautiful fig, guys. Azores Dark that you can see drying up on the tree, August 29th. Here we have uh, Morocco Altar 23, which is brown turkey um, compared to Azores Dark. This is not the same thing as brown turkey, but it's so close that it's probably a a closely related strain of brown turkey that uh, Harvey sells at Figaholics. The difference between Azor Stark and this fig is is uh, quite different. Um, and I was supposed to do a video on these two figs, but I never got around to it. Um, comparing a really great fig like Azor Stark to a brown turkey. Here's Canadria. This is the fig that we pictured in the video we did on how to properly ripen a fig. You can go back and watch that one. It was probably the most well done video I've ever done in actuality. Um, here's a really, really, this is the, this is the pinnacle of my season at this point, August 30th. This is when we had a heat wave, lots of heat came in and ripened these figs. I mean, so many of them are shriveled, like Ron de Bordeaux shriveled, Azor Stark shriveled, LSU Tiger looks pretty shriveled as well, Brandon Street, Taramo, all of them were of pretty damn high quality. I, uh, it was amazing to have all of these at one time. Here's the insights. We did a video on this, tasting nine varieties of figs uh, at once. My favorite of the bunch, though, on this particular plate was Smith. 
and then followed by Azores Darth. The rest were a notch below those two. Um, here's Canadria. I'm actually going to get rid of my Canadria because I have White Triana, which I think is a very similar fig, which we're going to show you guys in just a second here. Keep this thought. Here's Albo, a large honey fig from Italy. Hope I'm not going too quickly here, guys. We have some Alpine strawberries with it. Here's Dien Manel, which I believe to be very similar to Gris de Saint Jean, a French fig. But we're going to find out. Very tasty fig. Should do well here in this climate. Um, here we have another tasting that we did. This was the day after, it seems like. How can that be? Was it the day after? Maybe it was. But uh, there, two days later. It's two days later, September 1st, and the other one was done August 30th. So, again, we have some really high quality figs on this plate. Uh, Italian 258 and Smith and Dal Oso were the winners here. Um, really, really good figs, except Dr. Gawadi and Encanto, Mary Lane Seedless, LSU Champagne. And even some of the white Trianas were not ripened properly. I think I picked these guys in anticipation of a rain that was going to come in and probably ruin them. So I picked them early. You can see just how good these guys look. Really, really good. Here's some figs that I dried. So some of these guys, like Dr. Gawadi and uh, Mary Lane Seedless, they weren't ripe enough. So what I decided, because I'm not going to eat them, they weren't really that great, I'm going to dry them and see what happens. So I dried them and they actually were pretty decent. Uh, much better than they were fresh. Here we have Verdino del Nord. And this is a interesting little Italian fig that has probably good hardiness and good earliness. The ability to dry on the tree. Here's Hated de Argentile, which actually fell off the tree prematurely. Even though it looks quite beautiful it looks quite tasty. Um, it wasn't as tasty as you think. Neither was Verdino del Nord. Here is the tastiest fig I ate all year. And it is the tastiest fig I have in my collection, I believe. This is called Col de Dame Blanc. And uh, it's unbelievable texture on the inside. It's gooey. It's very thick and jammy. It's like eating pancake batter that tastes like a fig, like it's that thick. And it's like a fig cake is another way I've described it. It's so, so good. Um, man, oh man, here's White Triana. So uh, remember how I said Canadria is a pretty similar fig? This one is superior because White Triana was actually pretty close and the closest fig I've had to the thickness of Col de Nain Blanc. Maybe it was the time of the year because the both of these ripened during like a heat wave, but I don't I don't know. Uh, I think I've had white trianas later in the season that were also quite thick. It's a very very good uh, fig, guys. Here's Smith, another one. Here's a plate of Azores Dark. Beautiful. Another Morocco Alter 23, aka Brown Turkey. Here's a plate of LSU Champagne. See, they're really starting to come in now in September. We've been in September now in the last many photos here. Here's a Ron de Bordeaux that I completely didn't even realize was on the tree. It dried up. The skin was chewy, thick, and the interior was amazing. I couldn't believe how good this one. We did a video on this fig. Here is Petit Albique. Amazing. Violette de Bordeaux. Look at that. It's such a great fig. It really is a classic. Uh, I'll always grow a Vila de Bordeaux here. Here's Blava Campanera. And to be honest with you, I've been really struggling with this variety. I couldn't really get a good handle on it this year. I had a few that ripened. I had two Brabas that ripened. This one got ruined by the rain. I also had another that uh, ripened, but something got to it. And that was the one that I would have been able to fully understand this variety, but something uh, ate it before I did. And then now I finally got more of them ripening outside, It's but it's just too cold, and we're probably not going to get more of them. 
Um, here is another DN Manel, and this one's beautiful. Much better than the first one. Amazing. Here's Spey, uh Israeli fig. We did a video on this. Very fruity, like fruit punch. Tastes exactly like fruit punch. Here's Blanche to do Cezanne's, and this is a amazing, thick, jammy, Adriatic type fig. Here is a uh, Brandon Street Unknown, much later in the season than we showed you guys in the beginning. These are less ripe, but they're just as good. I couldn't believe how good they were. If uh, a little bit less ripe. The tree has, I think, matured a little bit. Here's Moscatel Preto. Incredible fig. It's also big, does well here. Tastes very similar in my mind to uh, D.N. Manel, Rondé Bordeaux, Detrace Splice. They have a similar um, complex berry flavor to them, combined with uh, high honey sweetness. Here is arguably the best berry fig I had this year. It's called Cavalieri. It's really, really good. The problem with it is it splits a lot. You can see here's uh, it's split at the eye, but not only has it split at the eye, but it splits down the side. It may just be one of the worst figs for my climate, but the taste, if you live in a dry climate, it's insane. Um, here's a hardy Chicago unknown from an in-ground tree right in September 8th. We picked this one a little bit early, probably because of the rain that was coming in. Here's a Dr. Gawadi we picked a bit early, a big White Triana Canadria type that I'm also going to get rid of because White Triana is just superior. Here's Long D Out, huge, Long to do. sorry. Amazing French fig. I'm going to have probably uh, multiple copies of this. I'm going to put one of these in the ground. Um, a good, a really well ripened white Triana, black Madeira, and this is probably the second or third black Madeira I got that year. This year, the first one I got on September eighth, with the help of the greenhouse. I'm going to show you guys at the end of this video when we get to the end of the album, you'll see that I'm still getting black Madeiras to this day. It's it's uh, November fifth. Here's Azores Dark, dripping honey at the eye, which is a uh, characteristic of this fig. It does it quite often, but more in, in cooler, humid conditions, it, it will do this. Here's LSU Red, really not that impressed with it this year. It's a quite sizable tree as well, so I'm going to give it one more year, and if it doesn't impress me, it's gone. Moscatel Preto. This is a blue Celeste that my friend Danny grows, and he brought this to the Staten Island Fig Festival for me to try. I'm pretty certain this is blue Celeste. He doesn't know what it is. It's uh, it's mislabeled, but it's quite good. Here's the Firo, my favorite honey fig of the year. Uh, it's very complex. It's got uh, a skin that also brings another uh, flavor to it. The skin tastes like coconut and uh, has a bit of a nutty flavor to it. It's really good. Uh, the earlier ones tasted more citrusy, but as time went on, the citrusy notes went away, and I was picking up the skin. Here is a uh, Borgia Soak Reese, and uh, a very good fig my friend Raphael brought to me. It has a bit of a bite to it, um, but very good. Here's Bolvetta Campos. This fig doesn't look like much, but guess what? It is. This is a really tasty, thick, jammy fig. I was very surprised by this one. Um, the only thing is I'm, I need to get these things to ripen earlier. Otherwise, this one may not be the best choice. Here's Red Libya. And Red Libya is an interesting fig, man, but the thing splits just like Cavalieri. It splits right down the side of the fig. And any of that splitting that happens is really not good for my climate. It's too rainy here, guys. It's too humid. Um, but it's a decent fig, actually. Here's Brogiotto Nero Lorenzo, a strain of Brogiotto Nero um, from Italy that my friend Ciro really loves. He thinks, because there's many strains of Brogiotto Nero that have adapted or mutated all throughout Spain, France, Italy, all throughout the Mediterranean. This is one that he found that he really likes above the others. 
Here's GM172. This is a fig that uh, Georgie found from Malta. It's quite good. It also looks really interesting too. You can see that the exterior here of the fig, see this part? It's kind of translucent. It gives it a nice little effect. But that isn't good. That actually means the fig is waterlogged. It's beautiful, but it's certainly waterlogged. Um, and the tree just uptook too much water this year. Grafted this variety onto a younger, younger rootstock. Here's Strawberry Verte, a favorite of mine. Really tasty fig. Sunbird Unknown, tastes like peaches. Sucret, this one split a lot for me this year, but it's very thick and very jammy. The kind of figs that I like. Another Red Libya. Spayi. Planera. This guy split. Every single Planera fig I've ever ripened has split. And uh, it ripens somewhat early. It's a mid-season fig here, early to mid-season. Um, but if it's going to split like this, I, I can't keep it. So I think I'm going to give it one more chance. Here's a hardy Chicago unknown. We ripened from my in-ground tree. Uh, these guys got ruined by the rain this year. There wasn't a huge crop on that tree because it was a young tree that I planted. But this one was exceptional. It looks ugly. It looks very ugly, but it was good. Here's another Zafiro. Again, amazing honey fig. De La Roca, a variety from Ponds. Um, this is a top tier fig, certainly. Um, has like a Col de Dom flavor to it. Reminds me of a Col de Dom too in, in the look. Um, you know, I could see this one being a favorite, but it's just a late fig. And if it's not significantly earlier than Col de Dom, I think I'm just going to keep the Col de Doms. What's the point? Um, here's a plate of them, different varieties. I think the most, the one that stuck out the most here was probably Socorro Black, which is this beauty right here, I believe. Yeah. Uh, De La Rocco is also pretty good up here. And De La Gloria was the first one I ever ripened that actually tasted pretty good as well but you know these figs that I'm looking at here it's interesting because we'll go back to different periods of time and you can see that my figs just look better you know in early September I mean, look at the quality here you know look at the quality here and then we'll go back to where we were and the quality just keeps getting worse and worse and worse and worse because of all that rain. Just too much moisture, guys. Ruins the figs, splits them, invites fruit flies. This was a period of my season that sucked. Here's Del San Um Probably the Pond's fig that has the most potential to be the tastiest. I think it does. It probably is the tastiest Pond's fig. Here's Raven de Kelsey. This fig was a beauty. I ripened this one in a drier period, luckily. Uh, very excited to try more from this tree. Here is a uh, Osborne Prolific that my girlfriend and I, when we went to Connecticut to visit Mario, these were two figs that we picked off of the, the trees at the experimental station there. Um, they're trialing all kinds of different interesting things with figs to try to get them to uh, help farmers out that maybe want to grow these things in a colder climate. Um, I certainly have all the answers for that because that's what I want to do at a certain point. But they're developing you know, things that farmers can hopefully rely on and techniques they can rely on. Um, this was an incredible fig, guys. Osborne Prolific. It, you know, look how dried it is. It was nuts. I couldn't believe how good it was. Here's Babera Bronca, which was a huge shocker because this fig tastes like no other that I have. I'm thinking LSU Holier, Holier, Huyer, I don't know how to pronounce it, is probably going to have a similar taste profile to this. But so far, nothing matches this because it's a pure honey fig. So kind of similar to like LSU Champagne. But you can see that the interior is more pink, it's more red. That's because it has a fruity berry flavor attached. So it's got the honey flavor of a honey fig, plus 
a berry flavor that uh, is quite fruity and interesting, making this a step more interesting than your typical honey fig. A lot, and then on the other side of the spectrum, you'll get figs that are strictly berry, super berry, and then you'll get some honey that's added in there. But this is a true honey fig, the true flavor, the melon, sugary, you know, brown sugar, melon, honey fig type that you would, I would kind of describe as, <laughs> I don't know. And then, uh, you know, you would get an additional flavor, which really makes this rise above. Here's black Madeira that I got to eat. This is one of the few that I got to eat that was uh, any decent. Um, you know, the rain at this point in the season really is killing me here. October 4th, this one was taken. Really from October 1st to like probably the 9th here, the things were just very rainy. Here's a Malta Black we took off of an in-ground tree. It's been there for quite some time. Malta Black is incredibly good. Here on October 9th, we did get to pick some figs that uh, were of exceptional quality. We did a video with Big Bill. This is the best I could get at the time. Um, the rain really did punish these, some of them. But you got Delson, Wami Ron, Socorro Black, which was really good. You know, Rabin de Calci was up there. Zafiro was great. Blanche de Duce Cezanne was probably the best. You know, there's a Black Madeira there. There's an Italian 258 there. Here's Sweet Joy, and this one really impressed me, but not this particular fig. I'll show you guys in just a second here. GM175, again, it's got this translucent flesh. This is grafted on the same rootstock that uptook too much water in the other fig that I showed you guys. Here is Gallo. Didn't ripen properly. Uh, here is GM175. Amazing how this fig changed from the first one I got in the beginning of the season to what it looked like at, towards the end of the season. Actually incredible. You can go back if you guys have time. It's it's nuts. Uh, here is a green Aishia. Quite good for an Adriatic type, but it ripens much later, I think, than other Adriatic types. And for that and the splitting, it's just not worth it here. LSU Red, again, I wasn't that impressed. Smith, another great multi black. Got some uh, Italian 258s. These are like the last ones, I believe, of the season at this point. October 15th is when they stopped. More Smith. I got a second crop of Smith, by the way. I got a second crop of Ron de Bordeaux. Uh, almost the third crop of Zor's Dark. Here's Olympian that we actually ripened much earlier in the season, but the photo got uploaded later. Here's Smith with a really poorly ripened Aishia Black UC Davis. And um, here's Blaba. I'm sorry, yeah, this this is, uh, yeah. So this is Blaba Campanera. And the thing I want to show you is the eye. Look how beautiful that is. Look at the colors on that. Isn't that crazy? There's Blaba on the right. De La Plata on the left. De La Plata is a great fig. Uh, you know what? I did get to ripen a blava, but it, it wasn't um, it wasn't ripe. It's a shame. The De La Plata was ripe, and it was actually quite good. 8 out of 10 for me. Here's LSU Scott's Black. See this honey at the eye? Beautiful. Another good fig. Another GM 175 that's really not that ripe. Um, De La Roca, even though it's underripe because of all the rain we had, um, it's actually still pretty good. And then here we have a Black Madeira that I put in the greenhouse for the purpose of getting this fig to um, ripen. You know, I think you need to, here at least, you have to put it in, in the greenhouse in the beginning of the season and at the end of the season to get all the figs to ripen on that tree. It's a shame, but it's worth it because it's so damn good. Uh, this is Sweet Joy, and Sweet Joy, like I said, impressed me big time. Tasted like a marshmallow. Here's Noir de Barbantane. I actually ate that one today. Here's Izmir. We ate this one a bit uh, a while ago, four days ago. Um, this was up there with Col de Don Blanc. Tasted just 
similar, um, but not as thick. But it was still thick, but it wasn't as gooey, you know, fig cakey, you know, uh, pancake batter texture that I, I was hoping for. But his mirror is supposed to be earlier, much earlier. So this may be a really good, significant upgrade to Coldedon Blanc. Here we have uh, White Marseille and Black, Ma Black Madeira. Um, beautiful, beautiful Black Madeira that I got to eat. That was exceptional. Rivaled some California ripened Black Madeiras. The best Black Madeiras I've eaten. This was up there with it. Um, really intense burst of flavor. Exceptional. Here's Smith. And then the last fig of the year, which I ate today, was uh, Noir de Barbantane. Very similar to Black Madeira. A beautiful, beautiful fig. I couldn't believe how good this one was. And it was ripened November 5th from an in-ground tree. Pretty cool, right? So that was kind of uh, my fig varieties in review of this year. And if you guys want to go and see this album, I'm going to put this one in the description. Um... You can also, as I've said before, go to my spreadsheet here. In the beginning of this video, I mentioned that you can see all the ratings. The only 10s I gave out this year was Black Madeira UC Davis and Coldedon Blanc. Um, there's very few 9s, believe it or not. We have, let's see, we'll do a search for the 9s. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. Only 12 varieties got a 9, and I have many, many 8s. Majority of them are 8s. So for me, an 8 is a keeper, and uh, you know, a 9 is a step above that, and 10 is just on a whole nother level. So, all right, guys, that's the video. Hope you guys enjoyed this one. Take care, and I'll catch you all next time.